Bye, everybody. Uh, round two, take two. This is, uh, appreciate everyone who joined the, the live stream last week. Uh, sorry for the audio issue. So hopefully this one will be more successful. Tom and I will be sharing uh, some of our uh, bit, bits of information and data with everyone today. So if you do have any questions you want to ask us, feel free to ask in either the YouTube uh, live chat or on Facebook in the comments. So this should be being streamed to both YouTube and Facebook right now. So uh, invite your friends or leave us comments there and we'll, we'll get around to answering them. Um, and yeah, so I guess, uh, should we just jump straight in? Tom, how are you doing? Um, good. Yeah. Should I I'll do like a quick introduction? Um, so my name yeah, is, yeah, my name is Thomas. Uh, I am an assistant professor. Um, oh wait, no, I'm associate. They, they gave me a promotion. I forgot. Um, <laughs> I'm an associate professor at and, the University yeah, of Chicago. So I um, I am a cultural psychologist. Um, the fancy name they give it, uh, at the business school is behavioral science. That's like the fancy new way of saying psychology. Um, but I'm a cultural psychologist. Um, I'm at the business school, but I don't really know much about business. Um, I'm just a psychologist. Um, and I accidentally started a social enterprise called Smart Air. Um, Smart Air is dedicated to open data and just bringing some sense into the clean air market. Um, I was living in China. The air pollution was really bad. And people were selling purifiers for like $1,000, $2,000. That struck me as really ridiculous and just not good for people. And so I started looking into air purifiers found out they're really simple. They're just fans and filters. It's not crazy technology. Started building my own, started teaching people how to build their own for $30. And then eventually started Smart Air to teach people how to build them. And then to provide for people who don't want to build them themselves, which is most people, <laughs> uh, myself included. Uh, we provide you know, simple, low-cost air purifiers and data to back it up. And yeah, our goal is just to get people clean air. Uh, if they buy a Smart Air product, that's cool. Um, if they buy another sort of local, as long as people aren't getting ripped off and as long as people are making a, a decision based on data and, and you know, rationality, that's, that's cool with me. Um, doesn't need to be um, through, through me in, in particular. I just want to help people breathe clean air like, like I wanted to. Um, Patty, you want to uh, introduce yeah, yourself? Spot on. I think um, so. Hopefully that's, that's the purpose of this live stream today. We've, we've been fielding questions in from, uh, from all over social media. Uh, and we've got a list of questions here we're here to answer. So the goal of this really is to help you, the listeners, the viewers, to answer any questions you have about purifiers, masks, viruses, whatever it might be to do with breathing, breathing air. Uh, we are here, and that's essentially Smart Air's role. We are here to help answer those questions, dispel the myths, use data to show you uh, just essentially how you can protect yourself without breaking the bank. So hopefully that's what we'll achieve here today. Uh, if not, let us know in the comments and we'll work on improving it. Um, but, yeah. Uh, when when I started, so, if I can if I can hop in, I, when I started okay. Smart Air, I really just wanted to get like there were a lot of simple questions out there that I really wish I knew, like I, I wanted to know the answers to, uh, and I couldn't find good, simple, clear answers to it. Like, mm -hmm. is indoor air safer than outdoor air? Do purifiers capture the really small particles? Um, you know, more recently, do do purifiers capture virus particles? Things like that. And so, what I wanted Smart Air to be, and what I want this to be is just a resource where you can ask simple, basic questions that are really useful and get answers that are not, it's not what we think, it's not our theory, it's not my idea of the world, this is actual data. Um, and and the, the awesome thing is that there is really good data out there. It's just often hidden in academic journals or, or, or sometimes there's not and we have to do the test and then we'll do the test and then we put it online for everybody to see. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what I, it's basically all, the answers to all the questions that I had and I wished were available now are available to anybody else who's waking up to the problem of, of air pollution. Right. Or at least, at least we hope. We hope we're answering the questions that people want answered. Uh, and that's also why we're doing this, this live stream to answer those, those questions. So, um, yeah, I think um, I'll, I'll give a quick, quick introduction. So my background is engineering. I'm Paddy. Uh, from the UK, and um, Tom mentioned tests and data, and that's really what I do at Smarter. I'm I'm the CEO here at Smarter, uh, running everyday everyday business and, and keeping us going. But kind of what I focus on uh, really is is the data and is the open open source testing. Then we all the numbers, all the data that we put out on our blog, on on our YouTube, on our Facebook. Really, uh, that that's kind of my focus and my passion as a as an engineer myself, and. Um, I think Tom, you mentioned just then. You mentioned the you know question that's going around right now is 
uh, HEPA filters and viruses? And that's one of the questions we actually had from from people on social media. So let me read out the question and then uh, I'll, I'll let you go in and answer it. So someone asked, how effective are air purifiers for virus protection? Uh, I'll, I'll field that to you. Yeah, so this is a question I hadn't really thought a whole lot of. I mean, my, my original motivation for air purifiers and all that was air pollution. And so I hadn't really thought a, a lot about viruses until, you know, COVID came around. And this, this is actually kind of a fun, there, there's kind of a fun behind the scenes thing with, with Patty and me uh, when, when COVID started. We spent a lot of time talking about, you know, hey, air purifiers, useful for COVID? Like, is this a good thing for COVID? Hmm. And I remember I, I in particular was really skeptical. I mean, we, we knew from the data, there's, there's good data out there showing that HEPA filters capture viruses. Very clear. Masks capture viruses, right? Um, even like weak, thin, ma you know, N95 masks, they capture virus particles. Um, so thicker, larger HEPA filters also do too. We, we know this because back in the, I want to say it was in the 60s, um, researchers shot virus particles at HEPA filters. And then they measured on the other side of the filter, like, are, are these viruses getting through? And the answer was, was no. I mean, over 99% of these virus particles would be captured by uh, HEPA filters. Um, the reason that's kind of surprising to a lot of people is HEPA filters are rated to get particles 0.3 microns and above. Um, that's just small. Um, but vi a lot of viruses like the coronavirus, if it's floating around by itself, is smaller than that. So you can read stuff online where people are like, eh, it's smaller than 0.3 microns. HEPA filters are rated for 0.3 microns, so therefore they don't get it. And you'll notice that nobody provides data with that. It's just a claim based on a definition, right? But if you actually look at tests of this, uh, people have actually tested this uh, with different viruses, even smaller viruses than the coronavirus, um, they capture them. But when Patty and I were talking about this back in probably February uh, of last year, I was a little bit skeptical. I was like, okay, we, so we know from good scientific data that, that HEPA filters capture viruses. But is it going to I remember really clearly um, you're saying we can't put this on, on the, uh, you know, we can't put this on, on the website, say that HEPA filters really can, or air purifiers really can protect against COVID. You're like, we, there's no data. We can't put that up. So, uh, yeah, I remember that discussion well. Yeah. And my, and my worry was like, I didn't want to, I mean, obviously we have like a, a conflict of interest, right? And I want to be guided by the data, not by what's good for sales. Um, and, and I was skeptical. And what, one of the reasons I was skeptical is, okay, we know this thing captures viruses, but if it's going to reduce COVID infections, what we need to know is there needs to be virus in the air. And like, if Patty and I are in the same room, we need to know that somehow if I have COVID, somehow the air from me is going through the purifier and then not reaching Patty, right? Those viruses are not reaching Patty. Um, and that's something we didn't know. And that's a really difficult question to answer. You, you can't really answer that very well in the lab. Uh, you basically need real world um, studies for that. Um, and then Patty eventually found a, a neat study. This is about uh, air ventilation, um, but sort of relevant. Um, can you, can you, just give like a, uh, an yeah, overview of that. It was, a, it was a study on, on measles. Uh, it was done, I think, in the 70s, in, only in, in one school in, in the US. And basically what they found was that by increasing ventilation, so that means opening windows, turning on a, a central air system if you have one, opening doors and things, it helped reduce the transmission or the cases of measles in that school. So there's a really clear link between more ventilation equals lower measles. Uh, so that, but that, you know, that data was from 40 years ago and how does it, how does it apply to COVID and COVID is very different and, and things have changed since then. So, so that, that definitely was kind of a, a great starter, but it wasn't COVID, right? So we published that and we, we, we talked about ventilation and viruses, but we still didn't have anything on, on, uh, on COVID until I think Tom, a study that you've, you've recently uh, written up. On, yeah, uh, so there's a there's a study that was published in a, a journal that's that's run by the CDC uh, in the U.S. And what they did is they looked at schools in Georgia, public schools in Georgia, and unfortunately, some some schools during COVID uh, did basically nothing for the air um, in their schools. Um, they didn't open windows, they didn't increase ventilation, they didn't use purifiers, they did nothing. Um, now they, I'm sure they did other things like 
distancing and you know lower density and stuff like that but they didn't do anything about the air that people were breathing now other schools did and so some schools installed hepa filters either in the central air system or in purifiers that were you know in classrooms and stuff like that and so what the cdc did is said okay let's compare the schools how many kids got covid um, kids and teachers um, got covid in the schools with the filters or the schools uh, that did nothing and what they found is that schools with HEPA filters in them had about 40% fewer COVID infections than the, than the other schools. And the thing that, that's, I think, actually really cool about this study is you could say, ah, you know, maybe those schools that had the HEPA filters, maybe those were in like good neighborhoods or good schools where they have lots of resources or where people are maybe more educated and care more about COVID or something like that. So th the way that they looked at that, they said, okay, okay, let's only compare schools in counties that had the same infection rates outside of the school right so this county has like you know 100 per thousand or whatever um this other one has 100 per thousand let's just compare those so same same communities in terms of how much covid there was in the community even then the schools that had the hepa filters had lower infection rates um, and it was about the same the benefit of hepa filters was actually slightly larger than the benefit of ventilation alone. So vent by ventilation, they meant like opening windows, fans, increasing the central air to bring in more outdoor air, stuff like that. Um, but then the best thing was to do both. So there were some schools that did both, both ventilation and HEPA filters. And then they were even lower. I wanna say 50, 60% lower than the schools that did nothing. Um, so that was, that's pretty good evidence. I mean, you know, it's not a true experiment, but pretty good evidence that using HEPA filters can reduce uh, infection rates, even in the real world, even when it, you know, it isn't one kid breathing into the purifier and then, the, you know what I mean? Like just, just totally real world conditions. And so um, data like that has been, I, I think, uh, pretty convincing. So that's, yeah, I think that's, so to answer that question that we got, how effective are air purifiers for virus protection? In terms of the HEPA filters themselves, they can filter out 99% of the viruses, right? Uh, you know, over 99%. Uh, I've got I've got a sheet of HEPA filter material here. This is essentially all a HEPA filter is. It's just this small. Let me hold it up to the camera. You guys can all see. It's essentially just a sheet of, uh, you know, of, of fibers really. Uh, and it's folded into, into a shape to create kind of a HEPA filter. And this thing alone can filter out over 99% of viruses. And then what Tom's just said is that uh, it can help reduce transmission by around what was it? Was it about fifty percent? Forty percent. About forty percent. So, yeah. so, so that's that's pretty pretty good. Obviously, HEPA filter isn't the you know the uh, holy grail. It's not going to solve all your issues. You'll we'll probably still need to be doing things like washing hands and and distant social distancing and things like that. But HEPA filters, yes, they help, right? Um, so I think I think that's really 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 great data, and and we're we're pleased to have that because we've been alluding to this over the past year, but now to actually have this concrete data available to, to show that this uh, is working is, is really, really great. Um, yeah. Have you I heard think... of the Swiss, Swiss cheese model of uh, like the virus prevention or public health? I like, so, you know, you, you take a, like, you think of it like a sheet of Swiss cheese, right. That has holes in it. And then, you know, any sheet has holes in it. So like, you know, a mask isn't perfect or a purifier mm. isn't perfect. It's got holes where maybe the virus could come in, but if you stack enough sheets of Swiss cheese on top of each other, then eventually the holes are all going to be covered, right? So maybe that's, you know, masks and purifiers, or maybe that's ventilation and distancing or whatever. Mm. The, the more, you, you, no single thing is going to solve the entire problem, but you stack enough of them on top of each other and that probability of getting infected goes way down. I, I like that model, although it's made me want to eat a cheese sandwich now. So, uh... <laughs> uh, no, 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 that, that's exactly right. Stacking and, and multiple, multiple methods. I think that's, Spot on. Um, for, for anyone who's just joined the live stream, uh, welcome. We're, we're covering questions that have been fielded to us across social media uh, on, on anything to do with breathing, breathing, be it uh, pollution, viruses, masks, purifiers, you name it. We're here to help answer your questions. So if you do have questions, leave them in the chat, leave them in the comments, and we'll, we'll get around to answering them uh, today. I have, yeah, I have another I'm, question. And I'm Thomas. From... I'm the, the founder of Smart Air, and this is Patty. Uh, who runs Smart Air. He's in Beijing. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the US right now. <laughs> and uh, he's the one who actually understands how purifiers work. 
um, how, you know, he's, he's a background in aeronautical engineering. He understands how fans work and how airflow, laminar airflow and all of that stuff works. Um, so any, any like technical questions about purifiers, um, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely be able to answer all your, all your questions. I've got, I've got another question here from, from someone who asked, what are ionizer air purifiers and can ionizers kill viruses? So um, I'm going to start, I'm going to go jump straight in and start answering this question by showing people what an ionizer actually is. So I've actually bought some uh, ionizer parts off the internet here in China. And let me bring one to show to you. So if you guys are expecting some kind of fancy technology, here, here, is, here is an ionizer. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you can see. Let me just uh, let me bring this up so that you can focus. This is an ionizer. So um, this, this uh, brush here, is it going to focus? Not quite. Is essentially what gives out negative ions. So you, you, you connect this up to a battery. This, this uh, little, little thing here shoots out ions. And that's essentially all an ionizer is. And I've got a bigger one here just because I felt like buying more. So I've got a big one. And this is, you can see, this has got, you know, 20 brushes on the end. And this can shoot out a lot more ions. So essentially all this is doing is you're using electricity to create, uh, to break electrons away from, uh, away from gases in the air and to kind of turn turn the gases in the air into either um, negative or, or positive. Generally, ionizers only give, give one type. They give negative ions, uh, unless you're talking about bipolar ionizers, which bipolar, actually, they give you positive and negative. We'll come on to bipolar in a bit. But this really is what an ionizer is. And this thing, one of these is probably what you'll find in most purifiers, costs about 50 cents. So it's really cheap. Uh, it's nothing, nothing special really um and and that's all it is but these are kind of being right now they're being lauded as you know the be all end all uh in terms of virus protection so uh, Patty, I know you know what we should do we should we should create a product that uses that thing that costs 50 cents but let's give it a different name and then i bet we could sell a bunch of these i think that would be great <laughs> That's 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 Tom being sarcastic. In case anyone anyone's wondering, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we've we've never put these in our purifiers at Smarter because we we know that they they have pretty harmful side effects. They can produce ozone. Uh, there's more and more research now coming out to show that they can actually produce things like formaldehyde, acetone, so other gases. Uh, and yes, so ionizers can they kill viruses? Killing is there's there's been some companies claiming that that. That ionizers can, you know, they can latch the ions, can latch onto viruses and kill them. There's very little data or research to really prove that. Ionizers, what they definitely can do is that they can, to some extent, remove PM2.5 from, from the air or rather move it to surfaces. Now, it's debated how effective and efficient they are at doing that. Uh, maybe, maybe a massive ionizer like this with, with you know, 20, 20 brushes might do a little bit better job. But uh, they're, they're definitely nowhere near as effective as a 99% hyperfilter. So, so this. Yeah, let me, let me jump in there too. For, for anybody who doesn't know, so PM2.5 is that's tiny particles in the air, right? So, uh, car exhaust includes tiny particles, a coal power right. plant, um, you know, th things like and that. Particles that are, as well. Viruses yeah. are also particles in the air. Now, I, I want to point out though that when people say these remove particles from the air, Think of it like this. Have you ever blown up a balloon and then like rub it on your hair, like rub it on a, a, a rug or something like that, and then it'll stick to the wall? That's what ionizers do to particles, essentially. They make them stick to surfaces, right? So it's not really removing it, right? Mm -hmm. And so one thing that's kind of neat, if, if you have an ionizer, if you ever see an ionizer, if, it, if it's like plugged into the wall um, and the ions are coming right, right out near the socket, you'll notice that there will be a bunch of like gross dirt and like fuzz around the, the right. ionizer. That's because that, that's what it's doing. It's just making particles stick to surfaces. That surface could be the wall. It could be your bed. It could be your face. You know, I mean, like it, it's not, I would rather have those particles stick in a filter that I can then get rid of rather than just sticking to surfaces in my house where it's not really, we're not really getting rid of it. Right. So yeah, I, th I think there's, 
I mean, there has been with the COVID kind of pandemic, there's been this whole reinvention of ionizers. You've got what people are, are calling bipolar uh, ionizers now, and they're claiming that there's something new. They're essentially just ionizers that create positive and negative ions, nothing really that special. Uh, but I think there is a slowly a consensus appearing that people are aware of ionizers and are choosing purifiers without them. So I really think that's the way to get to go, or at the very least, the purifier that you can turn the ionizer off on. Um, Tom, do you want to do you want to talk about the bipolar um, ionizer incident in in the US? Because I know you're there and you've probably been hearing about it or or reading about it's, it a bit more than I have. There's yeah, th so companies have really jumped on the the ionizer bandwagon um, to try to promote these as oh. as COVID tools. And there was like I think a school district I want to say in New Jersey that purchased a bunch of these. Um, uh, by, like needlepoint bipolar ionization systems that were supposed to, you know, get rid of COVID. And then mm -hmm. public, you know, families or researchers got involved and were like, hey, wait a second. Like you, you realize that these things produce ozone, right? Um, or that these things can produce harmful byproducts. And, and also we don't even really know if these things get viruses. Like we, we do for a HEPA filter. We already know that. Yet, for some reason, there's a bunch of schools and, and it's not just schools. I mean, other other places. I was just in the in the gym uh, here where we're in the building where I am. And I just noticed that they have an ionizer. So they have put an ionizer in the gym. And it's like, oh, gosh, I was actually looking to, like, see if I could unplug it or something like that. Because, like, I'm sure you know, people don't know. They just they read the marketing materials and then they and then they buy it. Um, so, yeah, it's been a real a real problem in 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 the U.S. Just lots of people buying and selling these ionizers for, for COVID with, with really very little evidence. You, usually the best evidence you can get is like stick viruses in a Petri dish in the lab and like shoot a bunch of ion, uh, you know, negative ions at them. And it's like, Oh, they, they don't reproduce anymore, but it's like, mm. that's not what happens in, in the real world. Right. Um, so may, maybe it does, may, but maybe it doesn't. We don't have good evidence. Whereas we have a lot of good evidence for something that's already exists and it's cheap and it's been around for 70 years and we know it doesn't produce um, harmful byproducts and that's HEPA filters. All right. So we're saying stay, stay away from ionizers, bipolar ionizers, plasma ionizers, you know, there's, there's a lot of different names running around, but be wary of that. And, and if you've uh, got the time, go in and do some research and, and, and see what, what really that technology is. But we've, we've actually got an article on the bipolar uh, ionizers. So after the live stream, we'll put that in the, in the link below. So anyone who's who's watching can uh, click through and, and read about that and, you know, what to watch out for, what to look out for, how to make sure and check whether or not the purifier that you're interested in actually is an ionizer or not. We've got all that information. So we can share that with you with you later on. Um, yeah, no, I think that, you know, ionizers, that's been a really, really uh, big question uh, for the past over the past few months. So and I'm the, glad the reason it the reason it keeps coming up is it's, so this is the joke I was making earlier mm -hmm. is that companies realize that ionizers have a bad name um like i can't remember when this is like 10 or 20 years ago there was a company that was selling ionizers in the u.s sharper image selling them like hotcakes making so much money off these things and then consumer reports a nonprofit uh tested them published data saying hey these things are not effective um these are essentially a scam the company sued consumer reports and then lost because consumer reports was right um so it's like, you might say like, wait a second, didn't, okay, so if they lost and that was public, why are these things still being sold? Like, why, how do they keep coming up? The thing is, mm -hmm. companies just come up with new names. Oh, this isn't an ionizer. This is bipolar needlepoint ionization, right? This is different, right? I've literally talked to these people. Um, I have people who buy these products and they tell me like, oh yeah, 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 regular ionizers are bad, but this one, you know, with this fancy new name and it's like, yeah, yeah, no. Same thing, different packaging. Um, so, so yeah. if there's a, a piece of advice I could give you, it would be when you're if you're if you're looking at things like that, really be be wary of like just fancy sounding technical names with with bogus claims around it. Like, just it's an ionizer. You know what I mean? Um, the onus should really be on you know public data and, and let these things be out and be proved safe and effective before you uh, put one in your home. Agreed. Um, we've just had Tu Tiang jumping in on, on live chat on YouTube saying, hi guys. Hey Tu Tiang, how, how's it going? Uh, thanks for joining us and hopefully this will be interesting. We're, we're, we're sharing ideas and qu uh, answering questions that we've been given from people all, all over social media. So uh, if you've got any questions, leave them, in, leave them in the chat below. 
Next question, Tom. I think this is gonna this has come from someone fairly recently because I think this is obviously a, a hot topic. Excuse the pun. Right now, is um, people are, are asking us a lot about wildfires. So people are asking us, how does wildfire smoke actually affect the body, and how can you protect yourself from from wildfire smoke? So uh, I know I know you're in in the US and you probably uh, maybe even close to some wildfires. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna jump in and answer this one? Yeah, we've got we've already got a pretty bad wildfire season uh, here in the in 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 the U.S. and it's mm. forecast to just get worse from here, uh, which is terrible. Uh, I'm currently in Colorado and it's 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 okay now, but um, people are kind of people are kind of nervous. Um, so yeah, so one thing, so I'm traveling in the West this summer, and this is totally not something that I planned for the live stream. I mean, uh, you know, maybe fake news or whatever, but I really just. Um, just my life here. Um, so when I'm traveling this summer, I'm traveling by car um, and I actually have the square with me. Um, so this is our, our square air purifier, um, you know, simple, no nonsense. It's, it's just a fan and a filter um, in, a, in a nice plastic body that says smart air on it. Um, but literally like I just, I just take this on the road with me, um, put it in the trunk. And if there's ever, you know, wildfires or other stuff, um, you know, it, it's pretty simple and it, and it works and I know I'm covered. Um, so a lot of what you're going to be concerned about with uh, wildfires is particulate. Now, th there can be gas uh, pollution as well, um, but the main thing that I'm, I'd be concerned about in a wildfires is particulate. And so, so you know, particles in the air um, and a HEPA filter and a mask are what you're going to need for that. Um, surgical mask is better than, you know, cloth mask is better than nothing. Surgical mask is better than that. N95, KN5, 99, what, you know, those, you know, better than the others, right? So, so any little thing can help. Um, it, it can be really frustrating. I, like a few years ago, there were wildfires in California um, and the, a fire station in Sacramento was giving out N95 masks to people because the smoke was so bad. Mm. They were told to stop doing that. Um, and then they stopped because people thought it would be doing more harm than good to be giving people masks. Why? Right. What's, what's the reason? The, the reason was basically, well, oh, people are so dumb. They're, they're going to wear them wrong. And then they're going to think they're hundred percent protected. And then they're going to go out and breathe all this smoke. Right. I mean, come on. I mean, are they right that sometimes people don't wear masks correctly? Yeah, sure. Right. We've all seen that in COVID. Right. But I mean, first of all, a lot of that's motivation. Anybody with a mask around their chin knows that they're not wearing it correctly. That's not a knowledge issue. That's a motivation issue, right? Um, and secondly, I just think any protection is better than nothing. Um, and I think there's this just a ridiculous idea out there that like somebody's going to wear a mask and then like what, visit a wildfire? Like spend the whole day outside? Like that's ridiculous, right? Let, let people protect themselves. Um, I just, like, just hate arguments where it's like, well, you should actually do nothing was, was that argument, um, which is kind mm. of ridiculous. That, sounds, um, that reminds me yeah. actually of uh, in the early days of COVID, people were saying, I, I was hearing, uh, I actually got interviewed by BBC and they were saying, oh, but surely by promoting masks, aren't you worried that people will put a mask on and then think they're 100% safe and just go out and do everything? And, and you know, and I think it's, it's a similar thing. It's like, so, so Tom, what you're saying is masks and air purifiers can help filter out wildfire smoke because it's essentially PM 2.5, right? Tiny particular. Uh, but again, they're not 100%, just like we had for, for COVID, just like the Swiss cheese model. Uh, you know, you'll need these layers of, of protection. So masks, uh, air purifier. If you don't have a mask or a purifier, uh, staying indoors, is how is that going to affect PM 2.5? Is that going to... Help, help at all if you just go inside and close your windows and doors, Tom? Yeah, so this is a question I, I had early on. I remember I, I, like very early days of Smart Air, I had a debate with a friend of mine uh, in Beijing because my intuition was if I'm indoors, I'm probably breathing less. So pollution's coming from outdoors mainly. Um, like if I'm living in China, it's like factories and, and power plants, stuff like that. Wildfire, you know, okay, pollution's coming from outdoors. I figured, well, if I'm indoors, I'm breathing a little bit less pollution than if I'm outdoors, right? And my friend was like, well, no, I mean, the air just comes from the outside anyway. It's not like you have a different air source indoors, so it should be the same. And I was like, all right, we're just gonna have to test it. So I took a, a laser particle counter 
And I just went to a bunch of places. I've done this now in, in Beijing, in Shanghai, and in Delhi. Taken a bunch of places. Stupid simple. Just measure how many particles are in the air inside. And then go right outside where, wherever the place is and measure it out, outside. Results could not be clearer. On average, if we look at the really small particles, I'm looking at 0 0.5 microns. Um, very, very small particles here. Um, on average, indoors... If we're looking at a closed space, so like doors and windows closed, on average, it's about 50 to 60% of outdoor air. So if, if outdoor air is like 100 micrograms, indoors is going to be about 50 or 60, right? So it's not nothing, but it's better than, better than outdoors, right? So, Patty, you bring up a really good point. I'm talking about masks and purifiers. What if you're like many people who didn't plan in advance and now, now there's a wildfire nearby or now there's a you know, pollution event nearby? What, what can I do? Well, better than nothing is close the doors and windows. Um, that's, that's better than nothing. If you can improve the seal, for example, um, you know, you can get uh, insulation tape around the windows. Um, that'll, that'll make it a um, little bit better. Um, the only exception is if you're like cooking or if you're burning some, you know, if you have like a fire in, so indoors or, you know, smoking. I mean, these, these things, like, I always hate to mention those things because it's like freaking obvious, <laughs> right? Like, obviously, if you're burning something indoors, the air is going to be worse. Um, but, but yeah, so, okay, so just, so just staying indoors, you know, just getting in closing windows and doors can, can be a fairly big, big help uh, in lowering pollution levels. Um, yeah, you could basically cut the amount of particulate that you're breathing in half by doing nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's closing a, a and pretty simple, windows. effective, yeah. you know, life hack that you can you can do to uh, to to stay away from wildfires. I, I like that one. You know, yeah. Oh, let me yeah, bring I'm up a sure point about what we're going to see is air purifiers the... difficult to 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 buy. They'll all be sold out um, oh, in the US, sure. so people will be wondering what can I do. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, I I made this I made this prediction when we talked last time, but let me just make it again. This summer, there will be bad wildfires in the U.S. Um, based on, you know, climate change and, and just how the trends have been going. There are going to be bad wildfires. And there are going to be shortages of masks and purifiers. It happened last summer. It happened the summer before that. My prediction is it's going to happen this summer. So if you are in the West or not even the West, we got some of that smoke in Chicago last year. Um, Buy it now, but get prepared now. Either buy a, like a real purifier, buy the materials to make your own. So buy a filter and a fan, like a box fan, for example. Get some masks if you don't already have some saved up from COVID. Get it now because there will be shortages. There, it, it happens every single time. And if for some weird reason we don't get that this year and we're spared, great. You will be prepared for next year when it happens the year after, right? I mean, yeah. Get prepared now. And, um, and, and maybe even that, buy, you know, free, buy one for your friend and family, something like that. On top of that, the air purifier can help with, with viruses and, and other things. Even if there is no wildfire, it can still help out. Uh, it can help out filtering. Uh, you know, if you've got pets, pet allergens, dust, mites, you know, all these kind of things as, as well. So even if there is no wildfire, which Tom predict, you predict there will be, um, <clears throat> purifier will still be able to use it for, for, for next time. Uh, oh, yeah. there you go, Tom. Just yeah, let me screen. jump in. I, I had to, you know, I had to do the nerdy thing and look up research on wildfires um, and, and health. Um, and so this is actually fairly old data. This is from 98, 99. Um, these are from uh, fires that were in, um, in Arizona um, more, you know, a couple decades ago. And what they looked at was uh, the, the amount of particulate pollution. Um, the, this is PM10. So these are, these are you know, fairly large particles. Um, and what you find, particularly if I can, um, oh, I think I can annotate this, right? Great. Um, so if you see this line, uh, like right here, the one that's like kind of jumping up, um, what, mm -hmm. basically what that is, is these are hospitalizations for, for lung problems, um, along with the amount of particulate in the air on that day. So basically what you find is particulate, there are days where there's a lot of particles in the air, more people go to the hospital hospital um, for respiratory problems. Um, and so this is wildfire smoke in, in particular. Um, this is basically just one random study that I, that I picked up. Um, you know, there are, there are plenty that are like that. So basically wildfire smoke is going to affect, affect people. Um, the, the one thing I would say though, is that 
that's hospitalizations. People often think like, oh, you know, yeah, it affects like sensitive people or maybe some people have asthma or COPD or whatever. Wildfire smoke is going to hurt you whether you have an underlying condition or not. Even if you don't feel like it's affecting you, um, wildfire pollution, regular pollution um, will increase things like inflammation in the body, blood pressure. Um, it'll lower heart rate variability, which that's a bad thing. Um, these affect young, healthy people. Um, so even if you don't feel like you're coughing or wheezing, it, it is having an effect on your body. It's having an effect on my body. Um, mm. So, you know, be prepared. Uh, I think, don't wait I think, for uh, symptoms. Apologies that to, to people. Tom's screen share might have gone. You might have only seen half of it, but I, I, I think. I think, uh, yeah, I think um, you you got the gist of it. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that's that's all good. If any, if you if you want more questions or if you want to see those graphs, Tom, I'm sure you can share them. Uh, we can we can put those in the in the description below as as well. Um, so yeah, wildfires is is really something that uh, you know in in China three four five years ago everyone was or around the world everyone was saying China really is you know the most polluted polluted place in the world. China's air pollution has improved a lot, and now we see another form of air pollution. It's not industrial. It's not from cars. It's not you know, from, from what we're used to air pollution coming from, but it's from these, these wildfires and, um, and, and, uh, <clears throat> and yeah, from the wildfires and climate change. So yeah, we've, we've just got a question from YouTube, uh, live here. Uh, this is again from Tu Chang. Thanks for the question saying, is there a way to use rechargeable batteries, uh, for, for an air purifier to make it possible? And Tom, I know you, you have one of these. So, uh, is that right? Uh, and, and how, how is it? How does it work? Is it? Yeah, it, so it's a thing. I mean, there, there are portable air purifiers out there that run on batteries. Um, I've tested it. Um, actually, if you, if you go to our YouTube channel um, and search for wind with a Y, so like W Y N D, um, mm. you can see a, a couple live tests that I've, that I've done with it. Um, I'll, and I'll and basically, it yeah, it looks like a, like a coffee mug essentially. And there's like a little battery, a little fan and a little filter in there. And you, you turn it on and it's like, it's almost like the coffee we're shooting, shooting out at you. <laughs> it's like, you know, clean air is like shooting out at you. Um, and basically what I find in those tests is if, if I get really close to this purifier, um, it, the amount of tiny particles in the air go down by about 50%, um, which is, you know, better than nothing. Uh, but that's really close to the thing. Um, and it's pretty loud when it's on high. Um, so it's like, it's not super pleasant. Um, so it is possible. Um, but I, th I think there's decent limitations there on the amount of power that you need to, the, it, it's, I think both the power and then also the size of the fan, um, you need a decent size fan and filter in order to get enough efficiency to, to get that out. Um, although I will say this is one, this is one thing that Patty and I've been debating for years is whether we could make a better one. Um, and one that's effective enough, small enough yet effective enough to actually be useful. Um, the wind, I think, is you know marginally useful, um, mm -hmm. but I, I still believe it can be done. Patty's more skeptical. Who knows? Maybe we'll see yeah. in a few years. <clears throat> but Tom, do you want to do you want to share? I think for those of those those uh, viewers who have just joined and maybe didn't see uh, earlier, Tom, do you want to share what your solution is right now as you're traveling around your portable air purifier? So, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to call this portable, I mean, I, I carry this in the car. Um, so when I'm when I'm traveling this summer, I take the square purifier um, that we have. And, you know, I don't know, it's like the size of like a large toaster or two, maybe. Um, I can carry it in one hand. Um, it's like fairly, fairly easy to carry. Um, but when I'm traveling by car this summer, this is, yeah, this is what I have with me um, to breathe clean air. So oh, that's fairly so you're portable. essentially saying wind... Portable air purifiers, something running on a battery really doesn't have enough power. The fan's not big enough to really clean a big enough space. So you still kind of oh, need definitely a bigger, not. Yeah, air purifier. definitely not a space. I've tested it in spaces before. Like, can it clean a room? And like overnight in a closed bedroom, like a little bit, like maybe 10% lower um, particulate pollution uh, overnight in a, in a bedroom. The way I use that is I, I basically try to be in the airflow. So I try to have it just like a couple feet away from me and then I can literally feel the air on me. But even then I'm not getting maybe 50% reduction. Maybe if I'm like really mm. sticking my face in that thing. 
Um, so it's possible, but like I, you know, I, to entrepreneurs or engineers out there, I would say ta- try that one on for size. And if you get something, send me an email and we'll, we'll, we'll put it on, on the web. Cause I think that's, you know, I hear from so many people who want to make a better mask. We have good masks already. Um, like N95s right. are so cheap and simple and effective. People keep emailing me to say, I want to make a better mask. And it's like, I tell them, no, <laughs> like, I mean, g- go ahead and try. But here, here's something that nobody's ever emailed me about. Um, go do that. Like, that's a really cool uh, uh, area for innovation, I think. I think that, and I think that's, that's really a key to what we try and do at Smarter as well. It's not, you know, ionizers and things. These, these things have been done. We're not trying to re- reinvent the wheel or, or, or you know, or uh, try and solve a problem that's already been solved. We're just trying to take what we already know and just make it as efficient, as effective as, as possible. So uh, that's, masks are a classic example. Um, we've, we've never gone into masks because we don't think there's anything that can be done really to improve the effectiveness. Now, breathability potentially, you know, if someone came out with a mask, said, hey guys, I'm working on this mask that's much easier to breathe through and can still filter 99%, then, then maybe we would consider it. But, you know, we, we haven't seen that yet. So we're, we're really trying to focus here on, on making making things, helping people breathe, that's not reinventing the wheel, not, not you know, crazy marketing or, or anything, anything like that. Um, I think we've got time probably for one more, one more question. Um, uh, this one came from Jeff, who's in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. It's kind of more of a discussion. So, uh, so let, me, let me just read this out. So he was wondering kind of our opinions and challenges on spotlighting the issue of air pollution in kind of a judgment-free way. So he, his, his kind of background is saying that, you know, people are raised in cities in, like in, in Vietnam. They're kind of normalized to the air pollution problem or, you know, they're, they're fatty to the facts and fears. You know, they're kind of like everyone's warning them, oh, air pollution. And it's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of living in this. What's, you know, I, oh, God, what, what am I supposed to do? I'm used to it. A, a phrase that we hear in, in China is, what's si guan la? You know, I'm used to it. My body is used to it. So from so coming from someone, so it, it seems Jeff is someone who graduated from the Swiss Alps, you know, beautiful, clean air. It seems that when he shares the effects, people aren't going to listen. And, uh, you know, they, they don't not gonna listen. Oh, you're, you're perhaps someone who came from really clean air. Why should we listen to you? We've lived here kind of the whole time. So what can we do to spotlight the problem for these people? Jeff, this is a really great question. It's something we've seen and faced, I think, in China, India, you say Vietnam. So really many, many places. And, and it's just the same, you know, uh, I, if it's myself or Tom coming in and explaining to people in China or India, we are, we are the same situation, right? We've come from somewhere else. What can we do to kind of uh, really, really help people and show people that this is a serious problem, not just for, for us who have grown up in the Swiss Alps, but for people who have been living in air pollution for, for you know, their whole life. And, and maybe their bodies got used to it, but uh, are they really safe and what can they do? So Tom, do you have any suggestions or, or ideas on what can be done in, in this kind of situation? I, I saw this question and I wanted to hit it too, because I, I just thought like, what a great question. I mean, this, this really hits at a lot of my experience. Um, so I've given air pollution workshops, DIY purifier workshops, 200 maybe um, in uh, you know, all over China, India, and, and in other parts of, of the world. And it, there is, there is this issue of like, wait a second, you're a foreigner. Like, who are you to be telling me about the air that I'm breathing? Right. Mm. Um, so I've, I've definitely uh, encountered that. And then the, the sort of knock on question of if, if this has been the status quo for a really long time, then why is it a problem? Right. And, and how do you get through to people when people feel like the status quo is, is working for them? And I think one of the coolest things, the, the most effective ways I've ever seen uh, to, to solve this problem is to, to hit people's experience. If you can get people to experience this, to experience air pollution, that's what I've seen. And, and, and let, mm. me, let me tell you what I mean by experience. We, we have a lot of people in China, like I've talked to a lot of people in China, young people, you know, college, college age kid who said, you know, I want to get my parents or grandparents a purifier, but they're like, eh, don't bother with that garbage. Or like, they don't turn it on or whatever. They, they, I don't need this, right? And then we at Smart Air stumbled upon a solution to this totally by accident, not by design. But because we have a DIY purifier where the filter is on the outside, 
It's a fan and a filter strapped to it. And so the filter is, you can see it. You don't have to open it up. It's not behind the you know plastic. Thing. It's just, it's right there, right? What happened is these kids would still buy their parents or grandparents a pure, the, the DIY purifier. After a week or two, they would see how black this filter would get. And they're like, wait a second, that's, that's from in my home, right? That's a week? And then there's something so visceral about that, right? There's mm. something that's like, I can't deny how gross that is, right? I can feel it, right? It's not abstract. It's not a number. It's not a study. Like I, that was in my home, right? And I, that's, that is the, the number one most effective way to do it. And so I think what I would like, I mean, it, it's not super useful. I, you know, I wish I had a sentence you could say to people um, because what I'm suggesting here is difficult. It requires time and experience and stuff like that. But what I can say is it is hands down the most effective thing. It's just, it's personal experience. It's undeniable and it's, it's visceral. It hits people on this emotional level. Um, so I think yeah. that's, that's really the best way. That's really, really, yes, spot on. And I, I've seen it as well. You show people a black filter. Uh, Tommy, you're gonna you're gonna take yeah, your gonna get filter that. out. So this is this is US Air, right? This you yeah. use this purifier only in I think primarily Chicago. Uh, yeah, mostly and Chicago, a little, a little bit, bit of traveling. You're, you're kind of going towards the, the west coast of the US. So this this is only in the US, and this is the color of your pure, your filter. Yeah. I mean that's that's how gross this stuff is. Right. And this is like very, very clean air to begin with. Not even, not even used every day. I mean, yes, you see this. A and then, of what a new one would look like. Yeah. So, there we go. Let's put those next to each other. You can, That's you can great. see that there. Pretty, That's pretty great. shocking. Yeah. So, yeah. It's definitely, I think, it's I think so this gross. is really great. And, and in places like, so that is USA, in places like China, India, Vietnam, it's even blacker and it's even quicker. You know, it's, it's a week or two weeks. So, so Jeff, maybe, next time before you throw away your filter uh just just keep it there and then obviously you're not going to be walking around with a with a hyper filter um but you know people visit your house you're in your office you can take it in you can show people kind of a show and tell i think that's a great great way and, and so another way that's kind of uh maybe recently becoming more easier and easier to do is as we get smaller and smaller uh, quality monitors is just to show people now I still don't think it's as visual as a HEPA filter because that black really does, you know, it creates kind of a shocking, sh sh it shocks people. But an air quality monitor where you can just hold it up and go, you think the air now is clean? Look, these numbers are 10, 20, 30 times the World Health Organization limit. So that's, that's, that's another great way. Just that's a bit easier to carry about with you. Throw it in your bag. You know, I've, I've done this in India on, on a plane uh, in an airport, um, you know, on the subway. And, and even just picking it up and putting it on the subway, other people around me, this is in Delhi, they'll look over and what's this guy doing? And maybe you're, you're at least uh, raising attention to people. I think on the subway that day, the pollution was 300 or 400 micrograms, so 40 times wow. the, the, the safe WHO limit. And, and actually, they had it up on the screens. So Delhi, I was impressed. Delhi Metro, they put up the AQI on the screens, you know, that says next, next train coming in three minutes. And then they had the AQI. No one's paying any attention. But if you've got this device, people will look over your shoulder. They will want to, you know, they want to see what's this fancy, fancy gadget. What, what do these numbers mean? So I think that's another way. Oh, I actually, if I can out my brother. Um, so my older brother uh, uh, works for the California Air Resource uh, Board, um, which is sort of like the of Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, so this guy, this guy knows. Um, he's smart. Um, and yet I still am trying to convince him that he should probably have an air purifier in his house, if for no other reason than for the wildfires. He lives in California, so it, they get it, right? And yet he's been kind of resistant. I think it's the little brother thing. Little brother says that and then like, you know, whatever, screw the little brother. I think that's, that's kind of one of the, the, the things going on. Anyway, I'm going to visit him. I'm on the way to visit him soon enough. And I brought a particle counter that I am hoping to leave at his house and so that he can see it, right? Um, and so, yeah, I just want to second that. Like that, that's, that's literally the strategy I'm using with my brother. Um, he's you know, like smart, educated, um, all this stuff. But like, I, I, just want, I just want him to see the air in his home. That's, that's what, I, what I want. Right. And it can I really think, change I, your, your perspective. 
I think you're spot on there, Tom, that the family is often the hardest people to convince. So if you can find a way that will convince your family or show to your family, then uh, then that works. My, my sister lives in Uganda and she was having breathing, wheezing, you know, coughing for probably about a year. She saw a doctor, the doctor, oh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's just allergies or, or something. And I kept on saying it's air pollution, it's air pollution. Uganda has, at least in the capital, has terrible, terrible air pollution. So I bought her one of our purifiers for Christmas as a Christmas present and told her, forced her to turn it on. And she said, oh, it cleared up within a week, within two weeks. So that's really just just showing her. And she was she was shocked by just how black the filter was. So um, so yeah, so if if you can find ways to convince your family, then you can potentially use that on on other people. That's uh, that's a really, really great question there, Jeff, and something that we've struggled with in in uh, multiple countries. So kudos to you for the work you're doing in Vietnam as well, even if it's you know just one person, 10 people, 20 people that you're you're explaining and convincing what you're doing is helping people breathe clean, safe air. So that's that's really great and that's right in the in the smart air spirit. So keep it up and hopefully you'll be able to influence more and more people uh, and, and protect their health. Um, yeah, on, on that note, I think we've, we're, we're coming up to, we've just gone over 50 minutes. So uh, I think we'll probably wrap up this, this live session here. Uh, I want to say thanks to everyone who joined us on YouTube, Facebook, various platforms. I uh, appreciate you all, you all being here. Thanks for the questions. Great to have a bit of, uh, you know, uh, questions coming in and then chat there. Um, this, this is our first live stream. So maybe a few, uh, technical glitches here and there. Bear with us. Uh, we will hopefully be coming back with these more regularly, uh, going forward, maybe on a monthly or bi monthly basis, uh, where we will be sharing and answering more and more of your questions. So keep those questions coming on, on YouTube and Facebook. Make sure to subscribe and like to our channel so that we can, uh, so that you can stay up to date on everything everything that we're doing and uh, that's everything from from me tom any any last words to finish off close off the session yeah keep the questions coming and if we don't if we don't know the answer shoot we might even we might even go test it um so if you if you could stump us maybe we'll just have to go test it and find out what the answer yeah, is for sure. we'll just have to test it and bring out more data so that's what we're about and uh, thanks everyone for all the questions it's uh, it's really great to 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 be able to share this this information and hopefully keep some more lungs clean uh, around the world so on that note, breathe safe, everyone, and uh, we'll catch you catch you later. See ya.